Hey there, Sports History fans. Arnie Chapman here from the Sports History Network to share with you an awesome announcement. Now dig on this. Four of our amazing podcasts have clinched spots in the final round of the Sports Podcast Awards, and we need your support to take home the trophy. First up, we've got Basketball History 101 driving the lane in the best basketball category. Then on deck, we've got Orville Mulligan Sports Writer. He's cracking up the competition in the best sports comedy category. Marty's Illegal Stick is dominating the ice next in the best hockey category. And last but not least, we have Wrestling with Heels on powerbombing its way to victory in the best wrestling category. Now, again, we're counting on you to cast your vote and help out these incredible podcasters secure their well-deserved recognition. It's super easy. All you got to do is head over to the dedicated landing page. That's at sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash vote. Again, that's sports historynetwork.com forward slash vote. Now, let's take another look at sports yesteryear with this episode brought to you by, of course, the Sports History Network. Pro football's been around for over 120 some odd years. And if you haven't noticed, there's a lot of film footage out there. Well, the NFL on NFL Plus covers the NFL film from 2009 to the latest. But what about the films before 2009? Our guest Andrew Brown has a way to solve that issue coming up in just a moment. This is the Pigskin Daily History Dispatch, a podcast that covers the anniversaries of American football events throughout history on a day-to-day basis. Your host, Darren Hayes, is podcasting from America's North Shore to bring you the memories of the gridiron one day at a time. So as we come out of the tunnel of the Sports History Network, let's take the field and go no huddle through the portal of positive gridiron history with pigskindispatch.com. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your portal of positive football history. And welcome to another edition where we get to talk about a, a great avenue of football fandom and a great project by a guest that's com- coming on. His name is Andrew Brown, and he's the founder of the Football Archive website, the Pats Dynasty website, and some other great gridiron pro- projects. Uh, Andrew Brown, welcome to the Pig Pen. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Darren. Appreciate it. Yeah, Andrew, uh, you know, you uh, came in and you you, you talked to uh, Arnie Chapman of the Sports History Network, and that's sort of how we got connected. Arnie sent out a, a, one of his emails to to the network group here. So hopefully you got some invites on some other programs as well. So to tell everybody about your your great uh, things you have going on here. But we sort of want to focus in uh, you know, on your football archive site because that's a really – that's. I think that's the one you're highlighting right now to talk about. And yeah. uh, maybe we can have you on again to talk, get more detail on some of your other projects. Sure. But I guess before we get into that, maybe we, we need to learn a little bit about you and your fandom and, you know, what makes you your uh, your football brain tick? Um, it's actually kind of a roundabout story um, because my parents are both from England uh, originally. So they came over here, got a job. My dad got a job um, working over here. And my mom couldn't work because she didn't have the green card at the time, uh, but she came with dad. Um, and so to pass the time, she decided to, you know, was watching some TV and wanted to learn American football because it looked interesting. Um, this is, you know, the 70s. So it was before Google or anything. So you couldn't really like learn football. So what she would do is she would uh, write down questions that she would have um, and send them to work with dad. And he would get his American coworkers to answer them. So you know, she would send him, you know, what is a first down? And she would write it down. And he would bring it into his coworkers and he'd be like, "You, your wife wants to know this." And he goes, yeah. So that's how we actually got into football. Um, wow. And that, yeah, and man, that, that, that's, just that's really, really uh, going out on a limb. You know, you're you're here. You're coming into you know. I, mean, I, I don't. I guess you'd call it a foreign country. You know, we speak the same yeah. language, and yeah. and we're direct derivative of England. But God, I, that's pretty brave of her to to go. You know, for the the fact that people are looking at her saying, "Hey, you're pretty naive. You don't know the game." But I'm yeah, glad well, that yeah. people are able to answer her questions. Well, I think uh, you get a lot more leeway when you're the, uh, a small little woman with uh, an English accent too. 
So that, that's true. Loves to hear her talk, so they'll answer whatever question she has. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's cool. That's a great, yeah. great backstory. So then she passed it on to to you, and I guess your your father probably absorbed some of this too, being the oh, yeah. messenger. Yeah. So I mean, Dad is more of a baseball fan. Which whenever we have relatives come over, they're um, they always get drawn to baseball because I think it's very similar to cricket that they have over there, but much quicker. Cricket takes like three days to complete because it's basically <laughs> like baseball without the balls and strikes. You can just sit there and wait for your pitch, and you know. So it's right. it, it's much more exciting version of that. So most of them get drawn to that, which is what my dad did. Um, but mom was the one that yeah of the family that was football. Um, so the only TV we were allowed to watch growing up was Pages football on Sundays. Oh, really? <laughs> the TV was turned on, yeah. Yeah, in nineteen seventies, it wasn't always uh, good. Good uh, television, probably it wasn't happy times uh, football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, in uh, yeah, I was born in eighty three, so you know, growing up in the eighties, uh, there wasn't much good football on in New England either. So um, <laughs> that would all soon change uh, within a couple decades. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it worked out that um, you know my parents just decided to come to New England, and mom decided to pick up football, and then. You know, kind of right when my fandom started, um, graduated in high school in 2001 was kind of when this Pages Dynasty kicked off. So, yeah, uh, huh. you know, me and my brothers, we uh, we've had kind of the best sports upbringing you could probably possibly have being in New England as a, a teenager in the early 2000s. I mean, right. Yeah. You had the Red Sox were coming on strong and mm -hmm. breaking the breaking the curse and exactly. Uh, yeah. All, all kinds of good stuff going and on. The, the Bru Bruins were playing yeah. really well. Good hockey. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Celtics won one eventually. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so everybody's, you know, it's, it's just been one of those like charmed kind of lives when you're talking about uh, sports fandom in New England in that time era. Well, I can appreciate what you went through because you know, I'm I'm a little bit older than you. A couple decades before that, I grew. You know, I'm still live in Western Pennsylvania, and we had the Steelers and the Pirates, you know, and then eventually yeah, the yeah. Penguins came on. So I, I dig you, and you you get spoiled on that. You yes. grow up on that, and you have an expectation. Uh, you know, now I think both of us uh, this year, our expectations <laughs> of our football teams are a little bit below the bar. A little bit lower, yeah. <laughs> Although it's it's interesting to see the people who have experienced pre-dynasty patriots and those who kind of were born into it um just in the way that they handle this uh current situation that the patriots find themselves in yeah I, they just don't know what to do with themselves right yeah i i, I know i know what they're going through because i <laughs> i i appreciate everything you all of you are going through that's uh definitely so why don't you tell us a little bit of, more about uh your your projects now you said you know the yeah. football archive project sort of came as a derivative of your patriots project so mm -hmm. i guess maybe just give us a, a 50 cent tour of the patriots project yeah so um i think i just i found this uh infographic somewhere I think on reddit or something like that um, that somebody had made it just showed uh, the record of every team against Bill Belichick's Patriots. Um, and there was only at the time, I think there was only two teams that had a winning record against Patriots and eventually it was none. Um, I thought it was really cool, but um, it was just a static infographic and being somebody who makes websites for a living, I thought, Oh, let's just, you know, turn this into a quick website. Uh, and then that snowballed because <laughs> mm -hmm. I had to keep adding to it. Cause this was in I think 2017 or something like that. So it wasn't finished. Um, so I kept adding to it and adding to it, and eventually it kind of turned into this huge side project that now has um, uh, all the games on it, and from 2001 to 2019, um, and then it also has kind of all the stats for each game, and it has highlight uh, clips for all of them, and um, so it kind of like blew up into this big thing. Um, and so through that, I kind of started becoming known as the guy that had all the Patriots highlight clips um, on social media, on Twitter especially. So I've kind of been introduced to a lot of other uh, teams, kind of football history guys as well. Um, so I'm, I'm friends with a guy who does uh, Bill's videos and stuff like that and does a Raiders guy. And you know, we have all these other um, teams and we all have a, a group chat. And so we decided that you know, we was kind of talking about how, you know, the, the 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 pros and cons of what we're doing, and you know, the fact that the league doesn't care, but if they did care, they could shut us down and all that sort of stuff. Um, and the fact that they the league doesn't really care about the history of the game, it feels, um, is very prisoner of the moment. What's happening now? What's about to happen? But once it happens, it's just gone from memory, right? 
Um, and so the hardest part was trying to find the video of these games that people wanted to talk about. Um, there's uh, a guy in our group that's a Steelers fan who posts all sorts of like really old um, Steelers highlights and clips and you know, stories that he puts with them. And it's really like in-depth stuff, but finding the actual video to go along with the stories that he's finding is, is really hard. Um, and so we thought that we could all kind of pull together all of our resources because, you know, we all have videos and bits and pieces of stuff here and there um, and put it all together into one website um that's the football archive i guess we're calling it right now it, it's it's still in its beta phase if you will um so it hasn't been released but you know we can i can send you the the url for where it lives at the moment um until we get a real one um you can put that in the show notes if you want if your yeah. listeners want to visit yeah. it listeners uh, just uh, just a little editorial note here if you're uh you know listening and you're in your car and you're you know you don't have anything to write down we're going to put the the link uh to andrew's site on here so you can look and see uh the football archive site or whatever if that'll be what it's called in the future <laughs> but you know whatever it is with all these great videos and everything because it's really really pretty cool i mean i'm, I'm looking here on your front page and mm -hmm. you've got 456 game videos as, as of yeah. right now, 206 non-game videos. Why don't you tell us a little bit, what, we understand what game videos are. What are non-game videos? Uh, I think the majority of them are things like um, season yearbooks. You know how the NFL used okay. to put those out every year? I don't know if they still do or not. Um, yeah, I haven't but, seen one for a couple of years. But... Yeah, but I remember getting them on VHS back in the day, you know, and it would be like a big thing um, to watch right. the whole thing. Uh, especially in those kind of early Patriots days, you're just wondering like, what highlights could they actually put in on this? Yeah, um, it's one of those kind of things like, hey, if you get your season tickets right now, we'll give you yeah. the, you know, the exactly. highlights of last season, you know, maybe yeah. you don't yeah. want to see last season, but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But if you get it for free, why not? Right. Um, so a lot of it is that. Um, again, we found some other um, kind of more general sports history uh, people like like you and um, some of the other guys in your network um, that have those sorts of things. A lot of. Um, uh, I can't remember. Whether, I want to say match of the day, but I know it's the England English version of like um the old school like uh, I think it was NBC uh, show that they had. So there's like things like that on there. Um, just reviewing the the like day's NFL games. today and that kind yeah, of that sort of that... thing. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Okay. Versions. So there's a lot yeah. of like that sort of stuff. Um, and you know it's kind of getting added to slowly. Um, like for instance the the um the Bills guy that um. I mentioned earlier he is currently he's uh, on Twitter at, at Bills VHS I believe it is because he is converting all his old VHS tapes to digital and then uploading all those games to the uh, to the website. Well, okay, so, so there's also so this is a mixture of like full length games and hmm. like different segments pre pre game and halftime yep. reports and you know exactly, the yeah. HBO. This is the NFL. Yeah, that's what I think. that kind of uh, stuff. Okay. Yeah, and also, uh, I guess back in the '90s, the Bills, um, a lot of the players had their own like shows. Um, I don't know if they were pregame, postgame, what exactly they were, but they have their own like silly shows. So he's yeah. I, I live a hundred miles from Buffalo. We're we're actually in their market. So oh, okay. We're, we're hundred miles from Pittsburgh, Cleveland, and Buffalo. We're sort of right in the middle in Erie, oh, wow. Pennsylvania. So, uh, but we get so we get some a lot of. Uh, each of our affiliates has its own, you know, favorite, I guess. So we get yeah. to see a lot of, you know, Jim Kelly used to have a show and Cornelius yes, exactly. Bennett. And yeah, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So, so he's got all those, uh, he, he's putting those, uh, onto, onto digital so we can have those up on the, on the website too. So wow. things like that. Yeah. And, yeah. Nobody, nobody's doing that. That's, those are right. some great yeah. things. And it is one of those things where even if you wanted to pay the NFL money, you can't to be able to actually like watch these again. Um, they're just kind of almost lost to the sands of time. So we're yeah. trying to do something about that. Um, it's kind of the gist yeah. of it really. So, so I was reading somewhere, it might've been in uh, something in your, uh, what you sent us in your email, but mm -hmm. you're saying that like NFL plus only goes back to, to 2009 season. Is that, is that correct? correct. Yeah. So you're covering pre 2008 and before. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I think we have, Games that go back to, uh, you can actually find it on the website too, uh, but the games go back to, I think, 1972 might be the earliest game that we have on here. Um, and it's it's kind of a little bit all over the place. Um, it depends on, you know, who has what. So you'll find 
uh, right now a lot of the pages games because I'm the one building this. Oh, 1978 is the first game, excuse me. And I'm, I'm um, seeing like a 1967 Broncos yearbook for your non-football games. So we're going back into yeah. AFL days even. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot cool. of these these um, accounts that I'm I'm friends with, they, they're uh, big into the AFL stuff, you know, especially the, the Bills and the uh, – there's some Oilers. There's an Oilers guy there. Um, there's, yeah, like I said, the um, – I think of, oh, there's a, a Jets guy in there as well. Um, so there's a lot of uh, AFL talk. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, so we want to kind of also maybe even like segment the website into like an AFL section too, because that's almost been completely forgotten as well. Um, right. It was an AFL, and all the the things that it brought, you know, the current NFL that you see now. Yeah. Well, I, well there's a lot of people of that, and I mean, I know some folks from world football league and the original USFL yes. and you probably, I mean, you could really, really probably have a, a wide array of uh, football for, for folks. And, exactly. Yeah. You know, and you throw things like CFL in there, who knows, you know, I can go. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Go on for, yeah. So great, great idea. And that's, uh, that's really cool. Now what, what, uh, okay. So you're just your, your collection of uh, your own personal collection and people mm-hmm. being interested in it and your networking with other folks so that's sort of what drove you and in your cohorts to, to compiling them all in this one place yep yeah pretty much it's just one of those things where uh every time people would be posting things um and talk about how hard it was to find this that or the other or there's always somebody asking hey do you you know if you're a pats fan do you have the 83 game from you know week 17 i have to go check through all my stuff and see if it was there or not um and uh, so then we just kind of like realized together that it was something that was missing. You know, there, there was a, a spot there that was missing um, that we would love the NFL to do something about, but they're obviously not going to. It sounds like um, from what I've heard from some people, uh, it just doesn't have enough interest. Um, so even when the NFL network will show old games, um, those don't tend to do very well numbers wise, um, regardless of the game. Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah I'm, because... I'm surprised because I remember what was it like probably 10 years ago they they colorized the greatest game ever played the 1958 championship yeah. and put it on it was like a big deal on NFL Network and right. I, it, you think yeah, it, it I, had to get good ratings you know yeah I just I don't think they were good enough to justify the work that went into it maybe or something along those lines um, hmm. but yeah and, and I think that's been on my mind too building this website um because, you know, I like I said, I grew up in the early 2000s Patriots. So, um, like, reminiscing about that is really easy. But before that, I don't have a lot of memories about football. You know, I mean, I have some of, of the 80s, but a lot of those games were blacked out. So I didn't actually see the Patriots much <laughs> in the 80s. Right. Um, so I was trying to figure out a way to, I don't know, I, I guess bring some of that um like so some of the information of the games that people don't remember because they weren't around for or something like that um and i don't think that just showing the games is the way to do it because you know, I, could, I could tell you about the 1983 pats dolphins game where it was one on the field goal where the um the snowplow driver went and plowed out the yeah, right, who knows yeah. what you're talking about, right? Um, but who's actually watched that game? Especially they just had the game. anniversary of that game on just the other day. We we cover yeah. a lot of anniversaries of big games and big yeah. moments. And we we had that that we featured that a couple of days ago. So absolutely, yeah. Was... Um, and you know they they actually had, if you go to the Pages Hall of Fame, they have that uh, snowplow hanging from the rafters. Like it's really <laughs> the, you walk in the Pages Hall of Fame, the first thing you see is that no snowplow kidding. hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> um. So they they have like everything around it, but not necessarily the game itself. So we're trying to figure out a way to, because the problem with it, I think, is that, you know, if it's someone like me, um, who's a little bit younger, wants to go back and watch this, I yeah, I can watch the game, but I, I have none of the context, which I think is what the big draw for an NFL game is. Like, it's not just the game itself. It's kind of the week leading up to it and the, the season leading up to it and kind of everything that's gone on in the off season leading up to that. And it, it's this culmination of like, you've had this week of, chatter you know sports talk radio and you know the newspapers and everything and all these storylines and then everything gets resolved in three hours on a sunday right yeah so it's kind of like watching a season finale without having watched the rest of the season before it 
So how do you kind of bring that context to the game? So that's what we're trying to figure out. Um, so one of our projects that we're working on is um, kind of a historical NFL red zone episode. So we're going to pick, you know, NFL red zone where they just kind of like keep jumping right. to different. Yeah. So we're going to do, we're going to try to do that with um, like a really exciting season from the past. I think um, the one we landed on, I believe it was the last week of the 1994 season. Um, just because of all the different playoff implications that were happening and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it was just a really exciting week of football and everything was coming down to the wire. And it was kind of like what NFL red zone was made for. Um, so yeah. we're going to see if we can kind of one, find all those games. Cause that's the hard part. Right. Right. Uh, I think we found most of them, maybe three quarters of them, give or take. Um, and then we're going to kind of chop it all up into the, the actual pieces of it and then kind of line it all up and, and have somebody host it and kind of put it together that way, just to kind of like get this idea of, Hey, like, there's old stuff out there that maybe you weren't around for, but it's actually still really cool. And here's why, you know? So wow. That's, uh, that, that's that one of the projects cool. we're working on. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's really cool. You know, you sit there and you, you're, you're looking for people, reasons why people want to watch these old games. Well, I can give you a good reason. You know, I, you know, the time we're recording this, uh, you know, my, my beloved Steelers are on a three game skid, you know, pissing away their chances to any playoff hopes at all uh thank, thanks to your patriots too by the way on <laughs> yeah, one of those welcome. games uh <laughs> but uh you know it's kind of depressing i get done watching this game i'm like going oh my god what this is like terrible football i mm -hmm. have to go to a happy place so yeah. i might put on you know i have some old recordings of like you know super bowl nine you know just put on something right. when the defense yeah. would shut people down and you had an offense that could actually move the ball and score. And it takes you to a happy place. You're like, Oh God, that's uh, great. I get to see these guys or even, you know, a, a mid nineties game, you know, even, yeah. you know, when they, they had some team, they had some talent and the guys really wanted to play and love mm -hmm. playing together and just enjoy it. And I'm sure you do the same thing. You go back to some of the Tom yeah. Brady days or something, the happier oh, exactly. days of Bill Belichick's uh, <laughs> football, but it just takes you to a happy place because yeah. you, you want to forget what's going on right now. Right. Well, I mean, cause uh, I actually do a podcast with my brothers uh, for that exact reason. Um, cause when I was putting together the website and I was getting all these clips and things, I would uh, come across a game and like go through it. And I'm, I'm kind of, you know, skimming through it as I'm, as I'm getting the, the clips that I need. And um I'm like this is this is a really good game. I don't remember it at all. I mean, it was like you know week fourteen of twenty ten season against the Jets that you know it didn't matter. It was you know they were already eliminated from the playoff, whatever it was. Um, right. And uh, and so I eventually cajoled my brothers into being like, hey, let's 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 go back and like rewatch these games um, because like none of us really have. Uh, you know, we we talk about all this stuff and you know, we put it all together, but like how many people are actually going back and rewatching like the full games, right? Like you'll, you'll see the highlights and stuff like that or um, things like that. So we decided we're going to, we started in 2001 and we do an episode on each game and we've worked our way through, I think 2005, I think we're in right now. Um, so we're just going through each game and just watching it as fans, you know, we're not, you know, but it's really interesting to kind of watch these games with uh, knowing what you know now, because when you're watching it the first time, you're just getting like the feeling of usually anxiety because it's football, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> um, and especially old school New England Patriots football is when were they going to blow it? Because that's the history of the Patriots in the NFL. <laughs> um, and then, you know, they just kept not blowing it, not blowing, it. but then being able to go back and watch, you know, Tom Brady, how he was in those early two thousands. Um, he wasn't the Tom Brady that we all remember, you know, even from the, the Buccaneers, he was, much more of a regular guy who would just somehow manage to pull it out at the end every week. Uh, yeah. which I think a lot of people have forgotten. They just sort of that, that guy that's out in the field wondering if they're going to give him the hook and put blood. So back in, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And sometimes you think yeah, maybe they should. Um, and there's, you know, there's Boston globe articles that we find about that talking, you know, um, <laughs> how maybe we should put blood. back in, you know, um, <laughs> Uh, I'm kind of glad they didn't, but right, yeah, I think we all are because I mean, <laughs> even though he caused a lot of pain for every other uh, franchise in, in football, but you, you got to appreciate what the man did, especially you know even after leaving you know Belichick's side and mm -hmm. thinking you know those two are joined at the hip and that's why they're success, and then to see Brady do it separately and take another team and win a championship was just unbelievable. So that, that's yeah. when I really 
gained them respect for him. Before it was just like jealousy, you know, hatred, jealousy, and you know, quit quit beating us in the playoffs and you it. know, <laughs> how'd you have to be, you know, in this era? Why, why couldn't you be in the NFC or something? You know, but <laughs> right, so, <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I uh I feel the same way about Peyton Manning. It's a lot easier to like him now that he's not in the league anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now he's lovable. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Love the guy. So Eli, not so much. I, I still uh, hold a grudge against Eli, but you know. uh, yeah, I, I don't blame you there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Andrew, let's say, um, you know, this is kind of a, a dynamic thing. I'm sure you're going to be finding videos uh, and people are going to be mm-hmm. coming, you know, finding stuff in their closets and stuff and yeah. bringing it to you and find, you know, becoming aware of you. But where do you, what, what's your utopic uh, view? Where, where do you want the site to be like five years from now? What, what do you picture and envision? Uh, that's a good question. I think I'd really like it if the NFL took an interest and kind of did it themselves, honestly. Um, I'm sure they have all these games, right? Um, so instead of us trying to have to get some sort of VHS copy that may or may not be the, the highest quality or, you know, finding it, somebody's posted on youtube and pulling that in things like that um would love it if the you know we kind of have the framework the nfl's like here you know we'll take it over we'll put the actual games in and uh then we'll keep it going and you know fill in all the gaps and everything because you know we don't we don't have every game um i think the only the only people that have every game is the nfl right Um, right so no no matter how long we go i think uh it's still going to be tough to find every game going back all the way um yeah, I mean, I, I, I think realistically, um, I just want it to be a place for uh, kind of football history content creators to be able to use it as a tool to find the things they're looking for, to be able to tell these stories from you know, the olden days, if you will, um, and be able to create their own content using the stuff that they were providing. Because um, one of the other things I've actually working on this week is... Um, the uh, MLB, the Major League Baseball, has um, a website. Uh, it's part of their website. It's, it's called uh, the Film Room. I don't know if you are familiar. Yeah, with yeah that. I'm, uh, I'm a little vaguely familiar with. I've watched a few of theirs. Yeah, so so basically, all it is is just um, like a search interface for highlights. Um, so you can plug in, you know, the Otani home runs in the ninth inning, sort of thing, and it'll filter out and just show you those. And you can like put them together to make a, a highlight video, right? And then you can kind of post that to their site. Um, so I wanted to do something similar with uh, the videos we have on the site. Um, so right now I'm working on a way to take the videos and cut them into individual plays. Um, so videos of each play um, mm-hmm. separately, and then find a way to tag them with the correct metadata of, you know, what kind of play is this? Is it a pass? Is it a run? Is it an interception? You know, that sort of thing. Was there a touchdown score? So then you'd be able to filter by all of these different things. So eventually, once we have enough content on there, you could say, you know, I want to create a highlight reel of all of Lawrence Taylor's sacks against the Cowboys or whatever it is, you know? And then you could just kind of like plug plug in the uh, the information. You know, Lawrence Taylor play was a sack and then it'll just pull them all up and then you can kind of put them all together and, and create a little highlight and, video that way. And that's really, that's what the, the teams are doing. You know, I mean... Right. So, somewhere there's a defensive coordinator, you know, having uh telling his film guy, Hey, I want to see uh our opponents this week. I want to see them. They played some twelve personnel last week. I want to see all exactly. their twelve yeah. personnel plays for the whole season so far. Yeah. And you know, show me what they're doing out of that. You know, that's there's some crazy stuff that they're doing. Oh yeah. I mean that would that would be cool that the NFL or you know, if you you know somebody get their hands on that, because I'm sure there's like uh, you know, splices of these uh tapes or downloads somewhere where they're showing, you know, you know. 2003 you know the uh, all, all of the new york jets uh well maybe we shouldn't get into that maybe we're getting into <laughs> some lawsuits and stuff there because uh, maybe we shouldn't say the jets but you know <laughs> well, los angeles rams you know let's see right. all their you know throws out of 12 personnel for exactly yeah for the 2002 season or something you know just something cool right. like that you know, yeah, they probably exactly. weren't they of course, they probably weren't Los Angeles then, so I might have misspoke there. So yeah, <laughs> they're probably St. Louis. Louis at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, just some cool stuff like that. That'd be that'd be neat to see. Like, and like exactly, yeah. some things. Well, wow, yeah. very very interesting. Yeah. So, um, but what are some of the uh, maybe some interesting backstories you have of maybe how you you got your hands on some tape? Everybody's got to have these little <laughs> stories or some of that unexpected uh, things um, that. Uh, 
I mean, most of actually mine came from a friend who collected them over the years, uh, and she filled up one of her hard drives, so she's going to buy a bigger one. Um, and her and I got to talking. She had actually helped me with some of the highlights on the website because um, that's what she was doing at the time for um, something on Reddit, I think it was. Um, and so I was working with her on that, and she kind of came to me. She's like, well, you, this sounds like something up your alley. Would you want my old hard drive? Because it's full now, so I can't put anything else on it. But would you want this so that, uh, you know, she's copied all of it all onto a new hard drive and then, like, just mailed me the old one. Um, hmm. So that kind of got me started. Yeah, that had all the pages games on it. <laughs> I think the entire collection all the way back to, uh, I think 2000, maybe even like uh, late nineties. Oh, um, hmm. And then a good handful through the nineties and then some in the eighties and like one or two in the seventies. So like a bunch of games, all the um, kind of uh, Super Bowl stuff that came out to on ESPN or HBO or whatever it was, like all that sort of stuff. Um, hmm. She had a massive collection. Uh, and so that was kind of where I got most of my stuff. Um, and then it's just kind of really, I have, once I had that, I, you know, and I was using it to create content, I'd have people reach out and be like, oh, I see that you have this game. Um, can I trade you that game for, you know, because I don't have that. Do you, is there anything you're missing? So I had a couple of holes that I needed to fill. So yeah, do you have these ones? And so it kind of, there's, I don't even want to say underground. It's kind of just this like niche nerd community of video collectors that I've somehow become a part of. Um, <laughs> so now I just have all these hard drives littering my house, just full of games and things like that. <laughs> now, now, how can people help you? I mean, maybe uh, somebody's you know going through their closet, or getting ready to have a garage sale or something, pulls mm -hmm. out a box of old VHS tapes, you know, from the eighties, and you know, you have yeah. like uh, you know the 49ers or something or something, yeah, you know, yeah. games, you know, how, how can they, is there some way they can get those to maybe, you know, they don't mm. have the technology to take the VHS and yeah. put it to something digital, but is there something, some way they can help you out in the project? That is something we're trying to figure out too, um, because we have people who have stacks of VHS tapes um, that they want to digitize, but uh, it's a hard thing to do. <laughs> Especially yeah, nowadays <laughs> when you, you know, can't actually find a VCR. Nobody has them anymore. Um, so we have a couple of guys who do it on the regular. Um, and so, yeah, we can definitely, I mean, if, if you just reach out to me like through, um, the website, uh, there, there's a contact form there, um, saying you have stuff, we can definitely figure out a way to get it to somebody who can digitize it. Um, but we're also throwing around the idea of creating like, um, almost a kit if you want to do it yourself with just like a little computer and, um, a VCR, you just kind of like plug everything in and put the tape in and it just records for you. Um, so uh, those are kind of the ideas we're doing because some people, you know, they have their collection, but they don't want to like ship it to some rando on the internet, um, which right, I yeah. completely understand. Uh, but they're happy to to do it if it's easy enough, uh, digitize it themselves. But it's, you know, finding the, like going and crawling eBay to get a VCR that works and making sure it works and getting it all set up on your computer and making sure you have the right connectors and all that is, is a pain, but you know, that's what I do for a living. So, uh, <clears throat> like I'm happy to, to build that and then like send it to people if they want to contribute. Yeah, or if yeah. you have any games digitally already, you can, uh, you can, you can help us and you can upload those too. Yeah, and, and folks, don't do be a dummy like me. I, I had some family videos on VHS and I was going to, I was going to convert them. I had a, an old, older VHS and it had a DVD burner on it. And I said, mm -hmm. oh, okay. And I hadn't used it for a couple of years. I, I just, you know, actually it was my dad's tape. I said, oh, I'm going to slap this tape in there and start going, well, it started spaghetti and inside. I'm like, oh my oh, God, yeah. my dad's going to kill me. <laughs> Here's all these family videos and everything. Luckily I saved it. And, uh, and I was a little bit nervous of sending out, you know, they have some of those companies that'll yeah. do, do that for it, but they say, you're not going to get your VHS tape back. I'm thinking, I don't want that. You, you know, what if something happens and exactly, yeah. you don't like the the quality of the DVD or whatever they're giving mm -hmm. you? And uh, so I actually found somebody locally that that did it, and oh, nice. you know, a few years ago, and, and did it. But I felt a little bit more comfortable. At least I could go to their house and bang on their door and say, "Hey, where the hell's my tape?" You know, yeah, exactly. so yeah, <laughs> it gives yeah. You a little bit. It, more I mean, I think it's that's probably what I would do too: is send it to somebody um, or find somebody local. But I think it was just the amount of tapes that we're finding. Um, like we have people who have hundreds of VHS tapes and 
sending that to the service are like 20 bucks a tape. Like that's cost prohibitive for a volunteer organization. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So we're, we're trying to figure out ways to do it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, yeah, if anybody has games that, um, you know, if you're browsing the site and you're like, oh, you know, I, I see that you have a bunch of games missing from here, you know, you're a 49ers fan that we don't have a lot of 49ers games on here. Uh, yeah. And you want to get in contact with me, you're more than welcome to. It's not hard to find, I don't think. Yeah, and, and folks, if if you don't, like I said, if you're driving in your car or something, listening to the podcast, and if you want to shoot me an email, I'll get you in contact with Andrew and we'll get you connected here. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Well, and also, our- um, right now, uh, if you want to, if you do watch old games um, and you want to help with clipping them into uh, individual plays, um, right now I've, I've just created an interface where as you're watching the game, there's a little button. Every time the new play starts, you click the button and it creates a new clip. Um, but right now it's a manual thing. So we have to have people go through and watch the games and hit the button. So if that sounds like, uh, something that's interesting to you, uh, let me know. <laughs> yeah, you're always looking for some willing volunteers, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so Maybe a well, lot that, work. Well, well, that's really cool. I mean, especially, you know, you sit there and you think about it, you've been telling me, you know, you as a Patriots fan or, you know, befriended, uh, the dreaded Bills fan and Jets yeah. fan and Dolphins fan. And, uh, you guys are working together and you like each other 363 days of the year, I'm sure. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Maybe two days or maybe <laughs> it's not so, so, uh, smooth sailing, but, uh, just, you know, you're, you're talking about Steelers fans and all kinds of different NFL fans, Oilers yeah. fans that, uh, you know, franchise that's right. been relocated and renamed and yeah. everything else. So that, that's a really cool project and a great way to network and uh, bring uh, great football minds together. So we appreciate yeah, well, that. And uh, I was a little shocked when it started because everybody I brought in uh, probably shouldn't have liked me because of my fandom for the Patriots because it was all <laughs> the, uh, at, at first it was just nothing but uh, all the Patriots rivals and they were all just super cool people um, because I think just people who like the history of the NFL uh, the conversation just feels different too. You know, it's not this kind of back and forth tit for tat sort of thing. It's actually like deep. I mean, there's some of that, of course, you know, especially with Jets fans and such. But um, yeah, you know, it, it's it's much deeper than that. It feels much more thought out too. The arguments and things like that, which is kind of a nice reprieve. Yeah, it wasn't like they were the Jets fans were saying, "Okay, I, I saw enough of your Brady stuff uh, torching us." Uh, here, here's some Joe Namath footage back in 1971. <laughs> exactly, <you know>? yeah. <laughs> Take that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, hey, that's a that's a great project you're doing, Andrew, and we appreciate you coming on here and sharing with us, and we really appreciate yeah. you doing this and uh, putting this together, and everybody that's working yeah. with you, and hopefully you'll get some some more uh, folks that will help you out and give give you a video or maybe volunteer and doing the play the clips and uh, using your project here to, to do that. So Absolutely. we appreciate it. And uh, we're going to keep in touch with you on that. And uh, probably yeah. uh, I'm definitely going to be one that's uh, going to be using this a lot more to do some research on some of the stories I'm doing for Pixie right. and Dispatch. So perfect. Yeah. So I like to hear, I love it. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks so much for having me on. This has been awesome. Peeking up at the clock, the time's running down. We're going to go into victory formation, take a knee, and let this baby run out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow for the next podcast. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. A special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, Sports History fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I wanted to thank you for stopping by to listen to another episode here on the Sports History Network. Our podcasters are passionate about uncovering and sharing sports stories from yesteryear. And if you didn't know it already, we have over 30 shows across the network covering all sorts of sports history topics. In fact, here's a glimpse into one of our awesome podcasts here on the network. 
Do you wish you knew more about the 100 seasons of the NFL? You're in luck because you found the Football History Dude Podcast, where each episode is a journey back in time to learn about the rich history of the NFL. From the founding of the league in an auto showroom, all the way to what it is today, America's favorite sport and a behemoth of an industry. My name is Ernie Chapman. Football is my passion, and I want you to come along with me each week to explore the yesteryear of the gridiron. So hop on board, my DeLorean, and let's get this baby up to 88 miles per hour. How about that? I bet you're super hyped to go listen to that new podcast, right? Well, to learn about this show and all the other podcasts on the network, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Again, that's sportshistorynetwork.com forward slash podcast. Head over there today to find your next favorite sports history podcast.